Hello, my name is Paul Laidler and in this video I'm going to show you how to download the Silverfrost Fortran compiler and how to get started writing your first Fortran program. Let's begin by opening an internet browser and I'm using Google Chrome. From the address bar type in Silverfrost Dot com and on the first page you'll find an option to try Silverfrost FTN95 the personal edition on the next page find the download instruction and click on here that's uh, begin to download which you'll find appears at the bottom and after about 30 seconds or so that will be complete and you'll be able to click on the open instruction. Now when you do that depending on the operating system that you have that you're using you will get a dialog appears from the so-called user account control of your personal computer. It might look like this and that's what you get if you have Windows 10 on your machine or it might look like this on a different operating system. So click on the yes to allow the download to continue. In my case if I just click on open that will go straight into the next dialog which will show you the wizard for the installation of the Silverfrost tools. If you click on next and then accept the agreement you may get next a, a dialogue for Visual Studio if you have Visual Studio on your machine. In any case we can ignore that dialogue because we're not going to use the Silverfrost plugin for, for uh, Visual Studio. We go on to next and then we are now ready to install so you can click on install to go ahead with the installation. Now I don't need to do that so I can just cancel and continue from there. So it only takes a short while to download all of the tools and uh, when that download is complete if you open the file manager you will find that typically all of the tools have been installed in a folder called program files silverfrost ftn95 and there are many tools there which you, you are able to use but we're going to focus on just a few of them in this tutorial. The first is FTN95 which is the compiler, the Fortran compiler. The next is Slink which is one of the linkers that you can use. And then there is SDBG which is a debugger. Uh, there is Plato which is the text or source code editor which we'll use and then finally for this demonstration we will actually be using a dynamic link library called solvelibc and that com contains there are many different things including functions that we can use okay so those are the components but we're going to start off by using this editor text editor called plato so locate in your file manager in this folder locate Plato, right click on it and find in that list pin to taskbar. Click on that and when you do so you'll find that uh, an icon appears in your taskbar and you'll be able to click on that in order to start the editor. Alright so let's do that right now and bring up the editor which looks something like this. 
So everything now is ready for us to go ahead and to type in our first Fortran program. So from the toolbar we select this first button which is new to create a new Fortran file and it, we select from these different options we'll select a free format Fortran file and click on open. Now that uh, creates the file for us but we, we would then type in the script for our program, our Fortran program. So let's we type it in and it comes out like this. A very simple program with a, a name, demo, uh, an instruction, a command to print the text hello on the output and then uh, an instruction to end the program. Okay, so that's the text, that's how it appears. We now choose to save it onto our hard drive. And uh, here I'm going to uh, start by creating a new folder for these uh, programs. I'll call it uh, Tutorial. Uh, select that uh, and open that folder. Then type in the name of my program file. So I call it demo.f95 and then save. Okay, so we now have a file and it contains our first program. Now, in order to show you the basic process involved when we create our application executable. I'm going to work first of all from a Microsoft command prompt window, but shortly we'll be using a simpler approach, which is much more direct. But first of all, just to emphasize and demonstrate what is ha happening in this process, click on View and then DOSBox to open a Microsoft command prompt window. Now from here we can type various Microsoft DOS commands but I shall be only using two or three of these and to start off with I just type dir for directory and uh, that will show us that at the moment in this folder we only have the file which I've saved which is demo demo.f95 The first stage of our process is to compile, to run the compiler to translate that program into what's called object code and for that purpose I type ftn95 and then the name of the file demo.f95 and uh, at this point I'm going to add what's called a command line option which uh, is uh, checkmate And that uh, option provides extra information which will allow me to debug the application and also provide some runtime checking. If I then go ahead and press enter, then the process has been completed. And then if I type dir, so you should see the results in the folder to see what files there are there. We find that the demo.f95, the source code, has been translated by the compiler into demo.obj. And that's the object code produced 
from the compiler. The second stage of the process is to use the uh, one of the linkers, in this case uh, Slink. And this time we use the uh, demo.obj as the input, press enter, and that creates, as it says there, a resulting executable called demo.exe. And once again, I'll type dir, and we see now the original source code, the object code produced by the compiler, and then the executable provided or produced by the linker. The final stage of this process is to uh, type uh, demo.exe in order to run that executable. Now, uh, when you do that, if you've downloaded the personal edition, then you will get a box like this appearing. And that's the uh, screen that you will see, that is the information that you will see when uh, running the personal edition, the free version. And if you want to avoid that, that delay, then you have to purchase a license at that point. Uh, but um, in any case, what we end up with is as we type in demo.exe, we then find that the application, the executable, produces the output as we hoped of, of hello. So here we have illustrated this basic idea that we have uh, two stages, the compilation stage and the linking stage, to uh, convert from our source code into object code and then into an executable. Now one other thing I want you to show you from here, from this uh, command prompt, it, uh, is illustrated when I type path. Because when you do that, you find that in that list of folders that you get, you find included there this the name of the folder uh, for the Silverfrost installation, and that folder has been placed on the so-called path by the installation process and what it means is that whenever I want to type in one of these uh, Silverfrost commands from the, the command prompt then it will be able to find the uh, appropriate tool in this folder simply because uh, the uh, path is includes that particular folder Okay, so that sh shows you, uh, illustrates the basic uh, processes that are involved as you uh, compile and link a simple Fortran program. But I want to take it one stage further because when using uh, Checkmate on the command line, the effect of that is to uh, make it possible for me to run something called the debugger. SDBG is the name of the debugger and if I put in the name of my executable after that then that runs the same executable but in a different way. It allows you to step one line at a time through the code of the program and to look at the result one line at a time until you come to the end of the program. In this particular case there's nothing to view but in practice you will be able to uh, see line by line uh, what is happening as you run the program and you'll be able to step over each line or step into any lines that contain sub-programs. Okay so there we have uh, the tools that we're going to be using in this tutorial, uh, looked at from a very sort of elementary, uh, basic uh, approach. But in practice, we won't use that command prompt window. Uh, we'll do something a little bit more uh, direct and simple. So let's uh, exit from the command prompt.
and go back to Plato. Now, from Plato, we have this uh, basic toolbar which you can probably already see. There is also a separate toolbar which is used for build purposes, and if you can't see that, then you'll be able to uh, select it from the view menu and click on build toolbar so that it comes up uh, and you can see it. And from Plato, we can take our program as we've typed it. And uh, if we look at this button, for example, then it says compile. And if we click on that, then uh, that simply carries out the process of calling on FDM95, the compiler. And now Plato has made that call for us instead of going to a command prompt. And similarly, if you click on build, then that will carry out any compilation and linking that's needed uh, to create our executable. And finally, clicking on Start will run the program with the output presented there and then a prompt which we can you follow to uh, close the, the temporary window which has been created. Now, of course, all of that is very much simpler uh, and is the natural way to work in practice. So, we can type our programs, we can compile, link, and run our programs in a, a very simple way. Now, you recall that I put checkmate on the command line, and the equivalent of that is to select checkmate Win32 from the uh, toolbar. That has the same effect of adding checkmate to the command line. And uh, if I now uh, build it, and it's actually done the compiling and linking, so I'm now ready to run. But because I've compiled with checkmate, it means it's got debugging facilities built in. Uh, so now uh, I can click on here to start the debugger. Now before I do that I just want to go to the options menu because first of all I want to show you what it looks like if I don't have this option selected. Uh, if, I tip, if I click on start then it brings up and calls SDBG as we've seen before and it, you do exactly as before. Uh, it may appear behind uh, Plato, in which case you might have to select it from the taskbar if you can't see it. But after that, you just be able to step through the program as you as we did before and close it down. But in addition to that uh, standard way of accessing the debugger. If we go to the Tools menu and select Options, then there is this, uh, amongst various options which are available and you can look at, there is this option to integrate SDGB with Plato. And when you select that, it creates a, a link to uh, the debugger uh, so that it, the, the link works in a, a different way. Uh, and clicking on start now, um, what happens is that Plato begins a conversation with the debugger which is now running in the background and uh, having uh, created that conversation and, and begun the dialogue, uh, Plato is then able to step over one line at a time uh, as before, uh, but now the results are presented within Plato instead of within the uh, debugger itself. But otherwise we just continue as before uh, to step through the program. So uh, here from Plato we have all of the same facilities uh, but now uh, everything is somewhat simpler to, to work with. Now, as we uh, begin to develop programs in this way, uh, 
we find that there are different types of errors that occur. I'm going to briefly illustrate those here. Let me uh, start by changing this program and I'll put here a, a single quote instead of a double quote. So it's, I'm introducing a deliberate error into the program. If I now click on compile then it tells me that there is an error an unterminated character constant uh, on this particular line. Now, if I double click down here on the line then it points to the line where the error has occurred. That type of error, which is an error in the Fortran itself, the way in which we've written our code, is called a, a compilation error or a compile time error. So I just fix that so that now it runs as correctly as far as the compiler is concerned. But in addition to that, you might encounter errors uh, at link time. And let me just illustrate that by calling a, a sub program. I'll call it sub uh, 1 and with no arguments. We don't need to know what's happening there but this is a separate sub program which I'm attempting to call within the code. Now if I uh, click on compile it's quite happy to compile that because there's nothing wrong with this as far as Fortran's concerned but when I come to link it it gives me a warning that uh, this sub program sub 1 is uh, is missing and uh, yes we've not provided code for that yet uh, so that is a, a is an error it's presented as a warning but it's actually an error and that is an error which is detected or pointed out at link time then when we come to run the program uh, then we get this now is called a runtime error uh, because it's actually begun to run the program and it's come to this sub one which is not present uh, and that uh, has caused uh, an error report to be uh, provided uh, at runtime. So it's actually you can see there it's actually got as far as printing out the message uh, then it's encountered uh, a missing subroutine at runtime and, and uh, generated a runtime error. So it's helpful to be aware of the, that at any stage of our process we can encounter one type of error or another as we, as we go on. Okay, so that's uh, our starting point and uh, we uh, really have all of the basics that we need now to start to write our own programs. Let me just take you one stage further and that's uh, to show you uh, some of the things which you can find on the help menu. If you click on there then in particular you'll find that there's one labeled FTN95 and that gives you uh, the basic help file for the whole of FTN95 including Plato and uh, Visual Studio and lots of other things. Here's how to get started using Plato. Uh, here we'll find the command line options for the compiler. Uh, down here when we're creating uh, using this platform, the Win32 platform, we can see how to use the linker, how to use the debugger and so on. And lots of uh, information about uh, Fortran and uh, a library of functions and this is a, a good starting point, a place to get much of the basic information about how to use Silverfrost Fortran. But in particular I want to show you this Fortran 95 tutorial. Uh, as you click on that then you find that you're presented with a sequence of programs here in the first part A to T and in the second part A to O and uh, each of these programs presents a simple Fortran program 
In fact, the first one is very like the one we've already written. And together with that program, you find arrows which you can click on. And as you do so, you will see some information about what that line does and how it can be written. As you proceed through the program line by line, finally come to the end where you are presented with an exercise and then also a model solution should you need it. So having completed the first program, you then go on to the second and so forth. And by the time you've worked through all of those programs, uh, then uh, you will have a, a very good basic understanding of how to write Fortran. Well, that's uh, all for now. I hope this video has helps you to get started with Silverfrost Fortran. And I hope that it sets you up on your way towards becoming a proficient Fortran programmer. Thank you for listening.